Hi guys, good evening. So I would like to just start another topic in genetics. That is about the sex determination. So in the last class you seen something about the linkage crossing over last so deep. Just something about uh, in our syllabus what we have. Now today let us talk about one of the important aspects of false sex determining different individuals including human beings. Now, just we have different mechanisms adapted for sex determination. We have a number of components that are involved in sex determination. The most important component, something about the chromosomes, what we have. In addition to the chromosomes, we also have other factors like hormones, environment, the metabolism, and others, for example, genetic balance. And these are all some of the other aspects related to how sex is determined in the case of uh, different groups of animals. In some animals, we know that one, the sex is not genetically determined. For example, in the case of snails, in the case of mollusks, in the case of snails. So, in the case of snails, normally the sex is not genetically determined. The animal has the ability of changing its sex. So here there is no such uh, chromosomes or anything else normally responsible for the determination of the sex. So it can have the ability of changing its sex genetically. And in the case of some organisms, for example, when the eggs are kept at higher temperature, the higher temperature always increases the higher metabolic rate. When the organism and the egg is having higher metabolic rate, that results in the formation of female sex. If the organism is kept, for example, the egg of that organism is kept at lower temperature, the metabolic rate has been decreased. So that lower rate of metabolism normally makes the individual to develop into, that is a male sex. So this is one aspect. So in the case of smiles, the sex is not genetically determined. In some organisms, when the egg is kept at lower or higher temperatures, it is a temperature that makes the development of the sex in such organisms. But in most cases, we have maybe the chromosomes, more than 99.9% just nine of the individuals, we have the sex is determined mainly by the chromosomes. But in a rare instance, in except cases, we have sex is determined by some other mechanisms. Now we'll see one by one. So normally, if you take any individual, if you take any individuals, for example human being, we have just 46 chromosomes. Out of the 46 chromosomes, 22 pairs of chromosomes are common to both the sexes. They are not mismatched, we can say. They are actually paired chromosomes, more or less exactly similar in both male and female. Then if we are taking the 23rd pair of chromosomes, the last pair of chromosomes, and these last pair of chromosomes commonly called as the sex chromosomes or allosomes or heterosomes, they are also called heterosomes and you already know that one. Hetero means different. So the sex chromosomes are called allosomes or heterosomes. If we are taking human beings, two sex chromosomes are present and these sex chromosomes are responsible for the determination of the sex. So in the case of actually some organisms, we have other than these sex chromosomes, certain factors are taking part in determination. We will see one by one later. Now in the case of human being, let us assume, or in the case of for example Drosophila, so, in the case of Drosophila, we have 8 chromosomes. Or in the case of human beings, we have just actually 23 pairs of chromosomes or equal to 46 chromosomes. So, out of these 46 chromosomes, we have 44 chromosomes are called autosomes. So, we have 44 chromosomes called autosomes. I am using two catalysts to denote the diploid condition of such autosomes. The remaining two chromosomes, namely the 23rd pair of chromosomes, they are considered as the sex chromosomes. Suppose this is a female. So this is a female, for example, we have 46 chromosomes. We have two X chromosomes. Now in the case of male, we have 44 autosomes plus XY. Now these two sex chromosomes are exactly paired. But these two chromosomes are mismatched, we can see. These mismatched chromosomes. Because one chromosome is X and the one is Y. Now, if you are comparing these two chromosomes, X and Y. So, what are the main differences between these two chromosomes? 
For example, if you are taking the X chromosome, I am giving the simple way. The X chromosome is long and straight. The Y chromosome is normally short and bent at one end. Long, straight and then bent at one end, normally short in age. In comparison with the genetic actually activity, the X chromosome is more genetically active than the Y chromosome. The X chromosome is more genetically active than the Y chromosome. And even if we are taking Y chromosome in some cases, we have the male determinants are absent. But the Y chromosomes contain certain factors responsible for the fertility. I am not talking about this male humans, but generally in some cases, we have the Y generally in the case of human beings, we have the Y chromosome contain certain factors for the determination of the sex in addition to other factors responsible for fertility. So in the case of Drosophila for example, this Y chromosome has no role in sex determination. It contains only certain factors, those factors responsible for the fertility of the individual. If such factor is absent, that individual is sterile, but it has no factors for sex determination unlike the human beings, but we have certain factors found in the Y chromosome responsible for the determination of the male sex. So, if you are comparing X and Y, X is normally straight and long and this Y chromosome is short and bent at one end. And regarding the genetical activity, the X chromosome is more genetically active than the Y chromosome, than the Y chromosome. Now coming back to this one. So here in the case of female, normally we can have two similar chromosomes, here I am talking about, but it may vary in different groups. Or we have what is called the mismatched para chromosomes. Mismatched para chromosomes. Now here, so what will happen in the case of female, say an example, human being. So we have two X chromosomes, and these X chromosomes are called as allosomes or sex chromosomes, are also called heterosomes because they are different in the case of male. 1x, 1y, and here the two chromosomes are similar, hence the name is given hetero, heterosomes or heterochromosomes. And when the female forms gametes, suppose we are having just 44 autosomes, I am using two letters to denote the diploid condition, then this is the female having two X chromosomes. So when this individual forms gametes, so it is equal to you know the front diploid condition. During the formation of gametes, at the time of gametic formation, you know that one, the original diploid number is reduced to haploid, that is otherwise called the meiotic cell division and attachment cell division. Then only we can restore the diploid condition once again at the time of fertilization in the future generation, the next generation. Now we are getting for example, and just in the case of female, there are two different types of eggs are not produced. All the eggs are of similar type. All the eggs are of similar type in terms of sex chromosomes. The 22 autosomes, here also 22 autosomes, and then the sex chromosome XX. Such a type of sex which produces similar gametes in terms of sex chromosomes is called homogametic sex. A sex which produces similar gametes in terms of sex chromosomes is called homogametic sex. That means all the eggs are similar. That is with reference to human beings. So it may vary in the case of goats, you know that one. There it is different. Or in the case of some other organisms, femia, moth, etc. We have different types. Now with reference to male, what's that? with reference to humans only, I am saying that actually the female, just for example, when a sex produces similar types of gametes in terms of sex chromosomes, is called homogametic sex. Homo, similar, just like homozygous, homogametic sex. So unlike this one, suppose you are taking the male, so they have 44 autosomes. No difference. No difference between the male and female. Now this is a male individual having to be a number of chromosomes in the body cells, having 44 autosomes plus X and Y chromosomes. Now in the case of this one, you see that one. XY chromosomes are different. This is what is called mismatch pattern. Mismatch pattern. Now, when male produces a spore, so we are getting actually the spore. So here also the diploid number is reduced to haploid. So we have this is one spore with the X chromosome 
and this is another spore with Y chromosome. So, autosomes turn into Y chromosomes and X chromosomes as the case may be. So, you can see that one the sex produces two different types of spore or two different types of gametes with reference to the sex chromosomes. 50% of the gametes formed contains the X chromosome. The remaining 50% of the sperms actually contains Y chromosome. So, we have two different types of sperms produced. Two different types of sperms. 50% of the X and 50% of the Y chromosomes. And those sperms having X chromosomes are called gynospore. We are using as the case of class gynesia. So, this is gynospore. And those sperms having Y chromosomes are called androspore. Androspore, as in the case of the male part of the flower. So, here are two different types of gametes produced. 50% of the sperms are dinosperms and 50% of the sperms are androsperms. Hence, such a type of sex is called normally heterogametic sex. A sex that produces dissimilar gametes in terms of sex chromosomes. So, this is a few words about what we have the sex chromosomes. Let's see. So, a pair of chromosomes responsible for the determination of sex is called chromosomes, sex chromosomes or heterosomes or allosomes. So, the chromosomes other than sex chromosomes are called autosomes. You know the meaning for that one. Normally, the body characters are controlled by the genes located in the autosomes or the body chromosomes or somatic chromosomes. And such chromosomes having the genes for controlling the body characters are called autosomes. The other chromosomes concerned with the sex of the individual are considered as a sex chromosomes. Now, as mentioned earlier, if the two sex chromosomes are similar, then the individual is described as hetero, sorry, homogametic sex. Homo means similar, a sex that produces similar types of gametes. And like this one, we have heterogametic sex, what I described earlier. So, in the case of heterogametic sex, we have different mechanisms. Unlike that one, what we have in the case of human being. So, in some cases, we have the two sex chromosomes are different. For example, XY. Or in some cases, we have the males have one chromosome less than the female. For example, one bug by name Protinar. There is a bug, Protinar. In the case of this bug, the male has 13 chromosomes. The females have 14 chromosomes. That means one of the sex chromosomes is less. That is why in the case of male, we have just X0. That means they have 6 pairs of autosomes or you can say 12 autosomes plus only one X chromosome. Another sex chromosome is absent. Whereas in the case of female, we have 12 autosomes plus 2 X chromosomes in the case of protein. That was reported by Stevens and Wilson. It comes later. So, when this one forms a gamut, I mentioned earlier the case of human being, 50% of the X and 50% of the Y. Then what about this one in the case of a protein a bug? It's a kind of bug having 14 chromosomes in female and 13 chromosomes in male. So, in the case of protein bug, so here 50% of the sperms have normally 6 plus, that is X. So, you see that one, 6 plus x. So, in some case of protein R, all together we have 14 chromosomes in the case of female. So, 6 plus x, 6 plus x. So, we have just 7 chromosomes, that is equal to 10. All the x are similar. Then, what about the male? So, actually, so in the case of male, you see one chromosome is less. 50% of the gametes, the sperms, have x, 6 plus x. And other 50% have no sex crumbs. So accordingly, we have 50% with the 7 chromosomes and 50% with the 6 chromosome. That is without any sex Without any sex chromosomes. That is why, here also, we have a heterogametic condition. So, in the case of human being, we have heterogametic competition because of the differences, the nature of the sex chromosomes. But in the case of such individuals, protein are a kind of bug, and also in case of grasshopper comes later. One type of grasshopper we have 
the males have 23 chromosomes and the females have 24 chromosomes as in the case of Zephidia one grasshopper by name Zephidia this is a kind of grasshopper fasciate Zephidia fasciatum so the males have only 23 chromosomes the females have 24 chromosomes this is another example so here we have x0 condition here x x condition x0 there is one sex chromosome is less here the chromosomes are found normally so in such cases also when these individuals form gametes we have one gamete with full complement of chromosomes and one gamete with one chromosome less that is one of the sex chromosomes we don't have the two sex chromosomes not yet present so one with the full and another one just lacking one sex chromosome so here also it is an example for heterogametic sex because one gamete with all the chromosomes that is six autosomes plus x chromosomes another gamete is only with autosomes no sex chromosomes the same condition in the case of this grasshopper zephidium fasciate where you have the males have one chromosome sex chromosome less and the females have 24 chromosomes having full complement of chromosomes here also we are receiving two different types of gametes so these are also examples for heterogametic sex in addition to human male we have this in the case of proteina the bug or in the case of grasshopper zephyria fasciatum there are also examples for heterogametic sex so a sex which produces a dissimilar gametes in terms of sex chromosomes are said to be heterogametic sex so in the previous condition we have one x one y but here one x is there in one gamete another gamete is without any sex chromosomes that is why it's also called as heterogametes these two are called the heterogametes different gametes that is why the individual is also described as heterogametic sex now say I mentioned already the two sex chromosomes are of same uh, sorry then it is called homogametic sex and here different or it may be just one chromosome less x0 so this is with reference to what do you mean by homogametic sex and what do you mean by heterogametic sex if you take any individual we have two different types of sexual characters one is called the primary sexual characteristics and then one the secondary sexual characteristics what do you mean by primary sexual characters so in most cases we cannot see these primary sexual characters externally and want to differentiate the male and female we need some of the characters to be present outside and by which we can differentiate or distinguish the males from the females so accordingly we have two types of characters so the reproductive organs namely the gonads that is the that is the testes in the case of males and ovaries in the case of females they are considered as a primary sexual characters also called as a primary sex organs so the presence of testes in male and the presence of ovaries in female me and these two component ones are known as they represent the primary sexual characters normally such characteristics are found inside the body and we want to know whether the individual is male or female for that we need certain characters and for that <coughs> we have some semantic differences <coughs> the physical differences are the semantic differences so we have the semantic differences between the male and female sexes and that constitute the secondary sexual characters so you see the semantic differences for example the presence of beard in the case of male it's absent the presence of breast in the case of female and it's absent in male so these are all called the body physical differences or semantic differences what we can see sexual dimorphism even in the case of brown worm you can differentiate the male and female because of their length then some external morphological characteristics the male worm is shorter having coil at its posterior end and whereas the female is long and straight so such semantic differences between the male and female sexes either in the form of physiology or in the form of morphology or in the form of anatomy we can see <coughs> even we have the behavioral differences and all these differences between the male and female sexes constitute the secondary sexual characters so Accordingly, only we have what is called the sexual dimorphism, the morphological, anatomical, physiological, and behavioral differentiation. 
with the male and female sexes, what we call as sexual dimorphism. So, the secondary sexual characters are normally the external visible appearances. The primary sexual characters normally we cannot see as they are found inside the body. Now, actually the development of secondary sexual characters mainly and in the control of hormones. Control of hormones. Such a development of secondary sexual characters. In the case of any individual, it is called sexual differentiation. The development of secondary sexual characters is called sexual differentiation. And in most cases, the sexual differentiation is mainly with the hormones. So, anyway, the sex determination is mostly by the chromosomes. And sexual differentiation is mostly by the hormones. This is one concept we have to remember. The sexual differentiation is by means of hormones. And the sexual determination or the sex determination is mostly by the chromosomes in most cases. What are the secondary sexual characters? So I mentioned actually if the development of secondary sexual characters and normally it is called a sexual differentiation is mostly by the hormones. And sex determination is by chromosomes and sexual differentiation is by hormones. It is nothing but the development of secondary sexual characteristics. So I mentioned already we have two different types of sex chromosomes. One is X and another one is Y. Now, it was Hen King in, 19, sorry, in 1891, he was the first person to discover something, a small body along with the autosomes. He called this one as the X body. X body, Hen King in 1891. But it just actually the name chromosome, the X chromosome, was coined by Wilson in 1906. Wilson in 1906. The person who is responsible for just actually the color blindness inheritance. Now, and human Y chromosome was discovered there and just not now immediately after just a few years. This 1923 only the Y chromosome was reported by paint. Paint. This is something about the discovery. So first one Ken King discovered this Y chromosome, sorry X chromosome. He called this one as X body. But the name X chromosome was given by Wilson in 1906, a person who is responsible for the inheritance of sex limited character, namely the color blindness. You will see later about his work. Now, painted in 1923, he was the one just to describe and also discover the structure of Y chromosome. I mentioned the differences between X and Y all. Okay, now let's get now, normally I mentioned the X chromosome has certain determinants, sex determinants. So, the X chromosome is normally called as a feminization chromosome as it is responsible for the development of feminine characters. And for the development of feminine characters, it has a factor. And what is called the factor, the female sex determinant. That is nothing but the G, namely SXL. X linked sex, X linked actually. Gene responsible for sex determination. The name of the gene present in X chromosome responsible for the development of feminine character. So it's called as a feminine determinant. And similarly, corresponding to this one in the Y chromosome, we have another gene responsible for the development of feminine, sorry, the masculine characteristics in the case of male, S or Y, sex determining region. This other is called sex determining regions, and this is X linked to sex determining, X linked to sex determinant. So, these are all the genes. If these genes are absent, then there is no development of either masculine or feminine characteristics. So, for the development of feminine character, we need in the X chromosome this gene SXL. And it may also be just written as in the form of small letter. You can write it this way also like this. SRY gene, SXL gene. And this is what is called the male determinant. And this is what is called the female determinant. Now, we have a number of theories proposed by different scientists to explain the mechanism of sex determination. But the most important theory I mentioned already, nothing but the chromosomal theory of sex determination. In addition to that one, some additional eccentric method of sex determination observed in specific organisms, only not in the case of all organisms. So, accordingly, we have the five different types of theory. The most important theory, chromosomal theory of sex determination. And then the next one, genetic balance theory of sex determination, a peculiar mechanism observed in the case of Drosophila melanogaster, the fruit fly. 
Then hormonal sex determination have been observed by means of uh, and that is by a person by name F. Rolls. That is sorry, I made a mistake. So hormonal sex determination is very common in the case of just if you want to remove the testes and then inject the female hormone, the male develops into female characters. Or in the case of female, if you remove the ovary and inject the male hormone, then the male develops the feminine characteristics. That is very simple in the case of human beings. And environmental sex determination, it is an environment that is a female body or the external environment that is responsible for the development of masculine characteristics or the feminine characteristics. I explain in the case of one woman by name that is Brunelia, very dysphysic. Then the last one, metabolic, metabolic sex determination. So I mentioned already if you are keeping the eggs at a particular temperature, if the temperature is higher, then the rate of metabolism is also higher. Then ultimately that egg develops into female. And if you are keeping the temperature at low, low end at the normal level, then that will decrease the rate of actually what is called the metabolism. Ultimately that egg which is being kept at a low temperature, where the metabolic rate is low, develops into that is what is called the male. So this is a simple mechanism you can see in the case of uh, birds, in some birds we can see when the eggs are kept at higher temperature or at lower temperature, according to the nature of the temperature, the metabolic rate can be increased or decreased, then ultimately results in the development of either female or male. This is the simplest one, a rare instance. Now let's take first one, the most important concept, chromosome theory of sex determination. Now normally, I mentioned already, either the male or the female is heterogametic. So if male is heterogametic, the female is homogametic. Or just if the female is heterogametic, the male is actually homogametic. That's why we are taking only just one type, the heterogametic. So I am saying when you are having this heterogametic sex determination, the meaning for that one, one of the sexes is heterogametic and another one is homogametic. This concept of heterogametic method of sex determination as per the chromosomal concept, chromosome theory was given by Corrins. He was the first person to introduce the concept of heterogametic method of sex determination. And he proposed two different methods. In one case, normally, sex is determined based on the number of sex chromosomes. In the case of female, we have two sex chromosomes and male one sex chromosome. Or in the case of male, we have two sex chromosomes and female has only one sex chromosome. Accordingly, that is, we have one method of sex determination based on the number of sex chromosomes. Either the male or the female. And now these individuals are lacking one sex chromosome. Or either the male or female, they have full complement of chromosomes. As the case may be, we can say either way. Now, the second one, the nature of allosomes, sex chromosomes. That means the differences in the nature of the sex chromosomes. In one case, we have both the sex chromosomes are XX. In another case, we have just one sex chromosome is X, another one is Y. Or we have, for example, Z, Z, Z. We are using different letters. So anyway, there are two ways we can explain the chromosomal theory of sex determination. One based on the number of sex chromosomes. Another one that is nature of the allosomes. So number means here one chromosome is less either in the case of male or female according to the example and nature means we have xx xy either in the case of male we have xx or in the case of male we have xy or in the case of female we have for example zw in the case of males just we have z z according you will see one by one now the first method let us take sex determination sd sex determination based on the number of sex chromosomes so normally in such cases the chromosome number differs the male has more chromosome or the female has more chromosomes actually just common number of chromosomes or we can say in this manner either the male or female has one chromosome less one sex chromosome less than the normal level now i mentioned already this method was observed just in the case of uh, one grasshopper i mentioned already zephilia Zephilia, this is one grass of passiate. I'm writing here. So, in the case of Zephilium fasciatum, if you are taking the female, they have 24 chromosomes. 
Now in the case of male, we have 23 crores. That means you see that when the females have normally just we have 22 autosomes plus sex, like this. And in the case of this one, we have 22 autosomes plus X0. You see the difference. Chromos number differs. You see the number differs. And another one example I mentioned earlier, protein number. Another bug, protein number. Protein number. We have, suppose you are taking a female, 14 chromosomes. The males have 13 chromosomes. Here we have 12 plus XX in the case of female. And the males have 12 plus X only and the one is absent. That is the main difference. So anyway, you see the chromosome number. Now, the nature of the chromosome in the case of grasshopper was first proposed by Clarence McCallan. Person by name Clarence McKellen, and he was the most. And in the case of this protein, the person by name Stevens, and Wilson, Steven and Wilson. So Stevens and Wilson have observed the case of protein are a kind of bug. That is, the males have thirteen chromosomes, and the females have fourteen chromosomes. And another person by name Clarence McKellar, he observed the case of one grasshopper Sifidium fasciatum. The females have 24 chromosomes and the males have 23. So normally the sex of the individual is determined at the time of fertilization. It depends on the nature of the sperm or the nature of the egg that is involved in fertilization. Now let's see what is happening in the case of this method, the first one, what we have. So under this category, the female may be heterogametic or the male may be heterogametic. Let's take the first one the male. So male heterogametic. So we are representing what this one is called as a sex linkage. So whenever we are writing the sex chromosome to represent the male or female, the first two letters always for female. This is the universal concept. We are following as per the concept. And the second one there is always male. Or for example, if you are writing xx, xy, or you can write for example z0, z0, z, z, or zw, z, z, order may be the one. In all cases, the first one is referring to the female. So here xx, xy, I am writing. Here xx, xy, I am writing. So in this case, z0, z0, z, z, and here zw, z, z. So in all, we have the different types of sex determination. So in the first two cases, uh, this one and this one. So in these two cases, we have that is one common character. That is one chromosome less here in the case of male and here one chromosome less in the case of female. So that's why I put here is at zero. So anyway, the chromosome number differs. That is between the male and female sexes. Now the first case, what it represents here is nothing but male heterogametic type. That means the male is heterogametic. So in this case, you see that one, this is the female heterogametic type. You see, the female has only one Z chromosome, the males have two Z. So in all cases, always you see that one, don't forget, the first one is, the first two letters always for the female, the next two letters always for the male, whatever may be the alphabet given. So this is what we are representing the sex chromosome linkage. So in that one, the first two letters female, the next one just for the males. Now, so in the case of this one, it was proposed in the case of, so it is very common in the case of orders like Orthoptera. So in the case of class insect, there are 29 orders. One such order we have, one such order we have, Orthoptera. The Orthoptera order includes, the order includes, normally the cockroaches and grasshoppers. And one city grasshopper that is here, they mentioned one or what I described earlier by Clarence McCullough. And this is Civilian Fasciator. And that one has actually the male 23 chromosomes and the females have 24 chromosomes. One chromosome is less. And in the case of another insect, for example, another order here, Neptira, the bug. I mentioned just one of the examples, Protina. So, the example for male heterogamity, that is XX, X0 method of sex determination. 
One, the Orthoptera. Order Orthoptera class insect. We have the grasshoppers and cockroaches. Another order Hemiptera, which includes the bugs, or dimension one bug by name Protina, where we have the 14 and 30 chromosomes. Now, the female produces all gametes similar, whereas the male produces two different types of gametes 50 percent with the X chromosomes and 50 percent with the without any sex chromosomes. So, here the sex of the individual depends on the nature of the sperm that fertilizes the egg. The sex of the individual depends on the nature of the sperm or the genetic nature of the sperm or the genetic nature of the male that normally just determines the sex. So in the case of male heterogamity, it is a male or it is a sperm that decides what type of individual, what type of sex to develop. So, if the female gamete is fertilized by the X chromosome, we have the female individual is formed. If the gamete or the egg having X chromosome is fertilized by a gamete, that is namely the sperm without sex chromosome, then it results in the development of a male character. So, anyway, in the case of this method, XXX0 method, see that one the females are homogamete, what I mentioned, the males are heterogamete as they have just two different types of sperms at the time of formation of gametes. So the sex of the offspring, this is very important, depends on the fertilizing sperm. As the sperms are of two types, so the sex of the individual is determined by the nature of the sperm. So this is with the reference to what is called the female, sorry, male heterogamity. Now let's see the female heterogamity. Now you see that one, the males are homogamity having two similar sex chromosomes, is that is set. And now this is the female. The females are lacking one chromosome, that is one sex chromosome, that is instead of using X, we are using is it. Now the females have one is it chromosome and the males have two is it chromosomes. The example for this one, one large mark by name Fulia mark. There you have the females are heterogamity and the males are homogamity. Now, so what is happening once again here? There in the previous case, where you have the male is heterogamity. The sex of the individual depends on the nature of the sperm that fertilizes the egg. But here you see that one, the sex of the offspring depends on the nature of the egg that is involved in fertilization. Here the sex is determined by the egg, the female gamete. The previous case, the sex is determined by mainly that is a male gamete. That's the main difference between these two. So, in the case of cockroaches or grasshoppers or bugs, where the sex is determined by the male, and in the case of female mark, one type of mark, here the sex is determined by the female. Okay. Now let's see. See the next type of sex determined, the second method. So this is based on the nature of the sex chromosomes. So you see. Here there is no decrease in number of chromosomes. Either the male or female, they have full complement of chromosomes. For example, one type X, 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 Y method. So it is very often you see that one in our case, we have this X, 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 Y method of sex determination. The females have two X chromosomes, hence called homogametic sex. The males have two different sex chromosomes, hence called that is heterogamity. Now the male produces two different types of spores. One with the X chromosomes, another one with Y chromosomes. That is why I say already 50 percent of the sperms have X chromosome and the 50 percent with Y chromosome. So we have two X chromosomes in the case of female, in the case of male only one X chromosome and then one X chromosome and Y chromosome. So here the sex depends on the nature of the sperm that fertilizes the egg. In the case of male which is a it is a just actually the sperm that designs which type of sex to develop into. That is about in the case of a human beings or drosophila, we have this type of sex determination. Now, so I mentioned that females are homogametic and males are heterogametic. The sex of the offspring depends on the fertilizing sperm. Now, let's take the female heterogametic. The female heterogametic. So, you see that one the female having two different sex chromosomes, the males are similar. So, we have similar types of sperms produced by the male, but the eggs are two different types, 50% with the Z and 50% with the W. And those eggs which are fertilized by the sperm 
and those eggs having Z fertilized by the sperm, they develop into once again the male here. And those eggs with the W chromosome, when they are fertilized by the sperm having Z, then they develop into that is the female. So as the females are heterogametic, so whatever may be they are just the sex. The sex which is heterogametic, that is the one which designs the sex of the individual in the next generation. So when the individual, so the sex of the individual form depends on the pair. So always it is a heterogametic sex that designs what type of individual to develop into. See that one here, that is here the eggs, the female parent decides. And the previous category we have seen the male parent decides like that. So it is very common in the case of birds or in the case of butterflies, some fishes and reptiles, this method of sex determination. And now we have the same one, just a similar one, what is said, we have XXXY method of sex determination. And uh, there are two different types of sperms, 50% with the X chromosome called the gynosperm and 50% with the Y chromosome called androsperm. The sex of the baby is determined at the time of fertilization. Don't forget, it is being determined only at the time of fertilization. And that depends on the nature of the sperm that fertilizes the egg. If the egg is fertilized with the androsperm, then we have just normally the female or if the egg is fertilized by a sperm having Y chromosome, there is certain baby is one. There is certain baby is normally the male. So anyway, in each pregnancy, there is always 50% chance of being actually a male child or a female child. So the probability of either male or female child in each pregnancy is about 50%. That's why we cannot, we cannot blame the females in the case of human beings. So we have a wrong notion, you know that one. Normally, that is we are blaming the female for not having the male child. So the deciding fact is only the male, not the female. They are no way just connected to the sex determination in the case of human beings. We have to just abolish such wrong notions. And now coming back to this one. So anyway, the sperm designs the sperm decides what type of individual to develop into because the males are heterogamity. And now just we have seen already the genetic makeup of the sperm is responsible for the determination of the sex and each pregnancy there is always 50% probability of either male or female child. Suppose for example there is one person. So in a family there are just actually five children. And all the five children just we see that one let's say the females. Then what is the probability of the male child in the next pregnancy? Again, once again, one, just 50 percent. So if there are five children, all a female in a family, the sixth child, what is the probability of male child in the next pregnancy? It is again 50 percent. But then asking the person in a different way, manner, what is the probability of male child in the fifth pregnancy or in the fourth pregnancy? So for every pregnancy, we have 50 50, that is 1 by 2. So this is the second pregnancy, this is the third pregnancy, this is the fourth pregnancy. So what is the probability of male child in the fourth pregnancy? In each pregnancy there is always 50 percent chance. So you have to take 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 into 1 by 2, 1 by 2. So we can have 1 by 16. So the probability of male child in the fourth pregnancy 1 by 16. So we have just in each pregnancy there is 50 percent chance. So we have to calculate in that manner. So what is the probability of male child either in the fifth pregnancy or fourth pregnancy? You have to multiply in that manner. We can get the proportion what is given in the question paper. So this is the thing what we have seen so far. The parents, father, 44 autosomes and mother, just 44 autosomes. It's a very clear picture. We know that one. The gametes form here two types and then you have one type of eggs. So here the offspring depends on the nature of the sperm that fertilizes the egg. So X, then X we have the female child and androsperm fertilizes the egg, we can have the male child. Okay, so this is very simple mechanism. So in all cases we have the sex is determined by the nature of the sex crops. Now, a peculiar method of sex determination was observed in the case of Drosophila. Now in the case of Drosophila, there are eight chromosomes. There are eight chromosomes. That means six autosomes plus two X chromosomes in the case of female 
and two X, oh, sorry, one X chromosome and one Y chromosome in the case of men. So unlike the females, sorry, unlike the human beings, so where you have just actually a gene is found in the Y chromosome responsible for the development of male sex. But in the case of Drosophila, the gene for maleness is not located in the Y chromosome. Is not located in the Y chromosome. It contains only the fertility factor responsible for the normal fertility of the individual. It doesn't have any gene for the development of any sex. So it has no role at all in sex determination. And who is the desired factor? Here it is the X chromosome and the autosomes are responsible for the determination of the sex. So each individual has a delicate balance of uh, developing to either male or female. So the balance is shifted towards maleness or femaleness according to the nature of the chromosome, according to the relative strength of the genes they have, that is in the autosomes and X chromosomes. So here a peculiar mechanism. So the Y chromosome has no role in sex determination because it doesn't have the gene SR1. And normally here, the sex is determined by both the X chromosomes and the autosomes. They play a role in the determination of the sex. And this concept of sex determination, though the individual has sex chromosomes, the Y chromosome is no role, and now it is the autosome and the sex chromosomes play a major role in the determination of sex. And this concept was proposed by C.D. Bridges in 1960. And this concept is called genetic balance theory of sex determination. Then how is sex determined here? Now, here I mentioned the factor in determining sex what is this? It is a ratio between the number of X chromosomes to that of number of sets of autosomes. This is X chromosome, this is haploid set. As we know that one, we have just normally 8 chromosomes. Leaving the sex chromosome, there are 6 autosomes. So one set of autosome is equal to 3 chromosomes. Now the following facts were observed by him. Here the sex is determined by the ratio between the number of X chromosomes to that of number of sex of autosomes. Here number of X chromosomes, this is the number of sex of autosomes. One set of autosomes is equal to 3 because we have 6 autosomes in the body. Now this ratio where the sex is determined is called the X by A ratio or sex determining ratio. Now he calculated the relative strength of the genes. So he observed the following facts. Number one, Y chromosome has no role in sex determination. Now the genes for maleness is located in the autosomes. He also calculated what is called the relative strength of all the genes. The relative strength of all the genes in that chromosome. See that one genes for maleness are located in autosomes. And he calculated the relative strength one. For a set of autosomes that is equal to three autosomes, we calculate the latest strength that is for one set of autosomes that is equal to three autosomes. We also calculate that actually the genes for maleness located in the autosomes and their latest strength together one for three autosomes or one set of autosomes. And the genes for femaleness are located in X chromosomes with the related strength of 1.5. This is for one X chromosome. And that one is for one set of autosomes that is equal to 3. For 3 autosomes, the relative strength is 1. And here for 1x chromosome, the relative strength is 1.5. Now if you are substituting these values for a normal male or a normal female, for example, so this is a normal, actually I am taking 6 autosomes plus xx, that is normal female. And now you are leaving this one, let us take. So for one set of autosome, that is equal to 1.5. For another set, we have 1.5. Now the ratio, and just actually, this is 1.5, sorry. So I am taking only the autosomes plus xx. The value for one X chromosome is 1.5, for another one, 1.5. Now the value for just one autosomal set, for three autosomes. So for one autosome set, actually we have one. So this is a relative strength. 
Now I am adding this one. So see the relative strength. So the actually the balance is tilted towards the femaleness because the relative strength of the genes, the X chromosomes is higher, that is 3, than that of the male, that is 2. That is why the normal female develops. So in a normal female, the relative strength is 3 when compared to the male. And if you are taking for example male, I am taking XY. This is a normal male. So for one autosomal set that is one, for another autosomal set it is one. So the ratio for one X chromosome Y, for Y chromosome nothing, zero. So two is to one point five. Here we see that for the relative strength of the male, as the genes look in the autosomes, the relative strength is higher than that of the relative strength of the female genes look in X chromosomes. Now the balance is tilted or shifted towards the maleness. This is only the theoretical value, but he has done experiment by crossing a diploid female and a diploid male and then found the various combinations. So he obtained super female, a number of varieties, super female, normal female, intersex, normal male and then super male. So in that experiment he conducted, just he obtained such individuals, for example super female, normal female, just uh, the next one just we have intersex, intersex, then normal male and then super male. So in these experiments he calculated the x by ratio. In the case of super female he observed the x by ratio 1.5 and this one normal female 1 intersex 0.66 and in the case of normal male it is about 0.5 and in the case of just a super male we have 0.33. So these were the experimental results while making a cross between a triploid female and a diploid male. Now he found that when the ratio decreases, you see that one, the maleness increases. This is super male, the last one, the upper one is super female. When the ratio increases, the femaleness increases. When x by this is this is nothing but x by a ratio. When the x by ratio increases, the femaleness increases. And x by ratio decreases and normally the maleness increases. For a normal female, irrespective of the number of the chromosomes, it is always 1. For normal male, it is about 0.5. And when you have two-thirds the value, 0.66, then it is intersex. And that is actually we have to know that that is what is happening, that's the for your level. So when x so that is the original experiment he conducted. Now what he said the previous one wanted the theoretical value. So 2 is to 1.5 or just actually 2 is to 3, that is the, the values. Now this is the actual experiment he conducted. After the results, he made it clear when the x by ratio increases, what will happen? The femaleness increases. Super female. When the x ratio decreases, we have just actually the maleness increases. That's why we are getting super male. When the ratio is 1, then definitely it is a normal female. When the ratio is 0.5, it is a normal male. Then if it is actually 0.66, then it is an intersex. This is the experimental analysis. Anyway, here it is not the y chromosome besides a factor. It is a balance between the X chromosomes and the autosomes called what is known as X by A ratio, sex determining ratio responsible for the determination of the sex. Okay, now the haploid diploid mechanism of sex determination. So in the previous case, it is a balance between the X chromosome, X chromosomes and the autosomes are responsible. But here again, once again, in the case of uh, that is uh, honeybee, here the number, the set, for example, haploid and diploid is set. That is responsible for the determination of the sex. So in the case of one honeybee by name Apis, this is the genus name, Melifica. This is the species name. So here we have the males have 16 chromosomes and the females have 32 chromosomes. The males are 16 and the females are 32. That means the diploid individuals develop into a female and the haploid individuals develop into male. So the development of female is by means of biparental sexual reproduction. Whereas the development of male is by means of uh, 
parthenogenesis. So A is mainly fecal, 16 in male, and that is 32 in the case of female. So it is a haploid set of chromosomes for male and diploid set of chromosomes for female. So how is it happening? Now the female, so just imagine they have two number of chromosomes, the male and number of chromosomes. Now during the formation of gametes, so normally we have the process what is called the meiosis. This is what is happening in all cases. Now in the case of female, the, when the female produces eggs, it is by means of meiosis, so it forms the eggs like this. Eggs. So the eggs are formed by means of meiosis. Whereas here the sperms, as the males have only haploid number of chromosomes, the type of cell division that occurs during the process of uh, during the process of formation of gametes are the spore. This is by means of mitosis, so we have received the spore by mitosis. Now, when the egg is fertilized by the sperm, if the fertilization occurs, then we we'll get diploid condition, so it develops into feed. So, some of the eggs may be fertilized by the sperm, the sperm which is formed by mitosis, and the egg is formed by means of meiosis. Now, what will happen the resultant individual is female. So, it, this is by means of sexual reproduction, what is called a biparental sexual reproduction, because both the parents are involved. But some of the eggs normally, so in the case of honeybee colony, there are three different types of individuals. One, the worker, the female, another one, queen, the female, and both have diploid number. Whereas the males, what are called the drones, they have n number of chromosomes, what is 60. So how are they developed? So some of the eggs are fertilized and now some of the eggs are directly developed into the individual. Now this is the male. So this type of development that is normally an individual form without fertilization process is called parthenogenesis. And that will hear the development of haploid male from unfertilized egg is called arinotoki parthenogenesis. The development of haploid male from the haploid egg, the one which is not fertilized, so the unfertilized egg develops into male parthenogenetically. This phenomenon is called what is known as arinotoki parthenogenesis. Now the honey is an example for incomplete parthenogenesis because the individual exhibits both the sexual reproduction as well as parthenogenesis. That is why honey is an example for incomplete parthenogenesis and therefore the development of haploid males from unfertilized haploid egg is called arinotoki. So normally in the case of these individuals, so there are no actually fathers and sons because there is no father in this individual. But when you go into the next generation, so they have grandfather and grandsons. No father, no sons, but we have grandfather and grandsons. So for this individual, there is no father. When they are getting the next generation, now this male being the grandfather once the female is developed. So we have according to this concept, there are no fathers and sons, but we have grandfather and grandsons. So this is a peculiar mechanism that is normally seen in the case of honeybee. Now, effect of environmental sex determination, the last part. So, in the case of one organism, one acuroid bone, so what is called Bernelia viridis, that is the name of the individual, that is, it is a marine bone, Bernelia viridis, and this is belonging to one minor phyla, acura, that is what is called as acuroid bone, studied by F. Boss. Now, the individual exhibits sexual dimorphism. The female is normally larger, the female is larger and having a cotton like body. This is the female. The male is minute and microscopic. And this is the female. And the male lives inside the body of the female in the reproductive tract. Now this is the male. So the female is large and free living, having a structure. This structure is called proboscis. This structure is called proboscis. Structure is called proboscis. And now the male is leading a parasitic mode of life inside the body of the female. It is minute and parasitic. Now fertilization occurs inside the body. Now the eggs are released. So eggs are released from the female body. The eggs develop into larvae. 
The law may have the potentiality to develop into any sex because all the larvae are genetically and cytologically similar. They have the ability to develop into any sex. And those larvae which are reared along with the female, so this is the larvae reared along with the female, they develop into male. So they are normally attaching themselves to the proboscis of the female. Those larvae which are reared along with the female, they develop into male. Why actually culture? They are attaching themselves to the proboscis of the female and develop into male. And those larvae which are kept in isolation without female, they develop into normally female. And, and those which are allowed to develop sometime in the body of the female, after some time they get detached and kept in isolation and allowed to grow and they develop into intersex. So larvae with the female, that is male. Larvae without female, they develop into, that is female. And larvae attached to the proboscis for some time, detach and allow to develop and they become intersex. And from this one we have understood one concept. Now the female body is the internal environment, the marine water is the external environment. Now the proboscis, the body of female, secretes some male hormone like substance that stimulates the development of the larva to develop into female. The second case, the larva is normally kept in isolation, there is no hormone like substance only in the right water. That environment promotes the development of the larva into female. The third case, it is allowed to grow for some time and by the time what will happen? Now the hormone stimulates the development of masculine characters. Once that larva is detached after the development of some male characters, when kept in isolation, now the marine water environment just allows the individual to develop into just intersex as actually the female characters so that both male and female characters are induced either by the male sorry either by the proboscis of the female or by the marine water environment so this is happening in the case of a, in the case of a, this individual so namely this one area where it is that was studied by F. Gauss. So it's a peculiar mechanism seen only in the case of this one. So I have given the concept also in the form slide. We go through the one. You are welcome to ask any questions. Suppose you have any problems, any doubt in this chapter. So thank you once again. Just by concluded with this, the sex determination. We will just see once again with a new topic in the next class. Okay. Thank you. Let's see once again.